That's crazy, that's <laughs> right. Hey. Hey, how's it going, everyone? We, we were just watching the intro video with you and realized we're talking about the space, and yet the video has a lot of the history of the space. Right? Yeah, the elements, right? Yeah. The, I remember the receiver from the living room that then went into Reclaim Video, the mm -hmm. Reclaim Video carpet, which was an ordeal to put in, the co-working space. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. And then like the dead movement and all the different yeah. domain 17 conference stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. And we're, uh, it feels like both <laughs> interesting, but a long way away from where the space is now. That's right. right? And crazy. where is the space now? It's in a pretty it's, interesting evolution oh, of it. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is an apotheosis. I don't yeah, know really how it is. gets better. This is the space has absolutely bloomed, yeah. blossomed into a full blown arcade. Yeah. You've got a nice little work shirt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah. got my, I'm working. And Antonella says, I look like the janitor of Reclaim Arcade. <laughs> and, like, in some ways, yeah. we have been for yeah. four years, right? <laughs> like, we've been for just, sure. with the idea of trying to preserve something to, to bring it people to the, because I feel like it has taken a lot of maintenance and a lot of community beyond yeah. us. People like Monitor Boy and other people in the arcade world who have actually helped us have a really awesome arcade. Legends of the community. Oh my gosh. You haven't read that comic, Monitor Boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been a real trip. And I mean, I think I was telling you yesterday, I, I can't believe we're in week two already. Like we're already on our second weekend, well underway of the arcade being open and really literally right behind these walls. 20 people are playing over 57 arcade games, eight pinball machines. The 80s music is running like it's happening. I and, just talked with two women in yeah. the um, the living room and they were basically like, this is amazing. This is exactly like the the eighties like living room I had, and then like started reminiscing, and then we were talking about like when we opened and stuff, and I was like, yeah, like it when it hits and people like yeah. it hits on an emotional level. It hits as an installation of something of a time, but then there's also really nicely preserved games, yeah, and pinball, which has right. been super popular, and it's then like people a just dig in, fun, you right? know, yeah. And that's been so cool to watch. And the games are in a good position. Yeah. They're in a good shape right now. They are. It's, a, it's an awesome experience seeing people walk in because I think we did it right, which is they come into the VHS video store and immediately they're like, yeah. thought I was coming to an arcade. And you're in this <laughs> tiny room. You can't see into the arcade from there. It's just the Reclaim Video right. Store with one door. And, you know, they see all the videos and stuff. They get checked in. Then they walk through the door and the first thing they see is the 80s living room. Like now they're in their living room before actually the, they walk into the larger arcade space. So it's like more and more elements of like, where am I? And just traveling back in time until they get to the main arcade space, which is both nostalgic, but also futuristic. Yeah. I mean, it, we really pulled in that almost Blade Runner feel with the lighting and the yeah. music and all the sounds and everything. And the, the games make great furniture, right? Like, so it's a... It's the really best. impressive, I think, for people. And, you know, you wouldn't know it from this, like, strip mall shopping center that you drive up to. We've had some people just come in because they saw the sign out front and had no idea what they yeah. were in for when they walked through the doors. <laughs> and they're, they're like, like, whoa, what, what is happening? Is what here? is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, really? This is here in Fredericksburg? It's like, yep. This yeah. is this. And, like, when you walk in, like Tim said, it's like, you usually, as they're walking through the VHS store into the living room, you hear something like, holy shit, or like, <laughs> like what the, like you hear that, and then like about five seconds, three seconds later, you hear a, whoa, and that's when they've actually moved away from the living room right. and seen the actual, the arcade, actual arcade, which yeah. is blown up by a neon sign, yeah, which was like neon. the beginning of it in November when we were like, holy the, the potential for this space to just pop like that mm -hmm. was real and we nailed it. Yeah. It just, the space itself is a trip. Like it's a wild corner to go around. VHS, living room, arcade. Yeah. I love that one, two, three punch. Yeah. And it's been cool that people have come out. I mean, like I said, we're in week two. There's yeah. a full house behind us now. It's yeah. been busy it's all great. day long. and. And even in future weeks, we're already seeing people book out lots of private parties, lots of families. I've seen lots lot of people of with kids. A lot of kids. I've, yeah, I've seen people, we've got step stools and people are bringing 
kids That's as right. small as three and four years old and propping them up and playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with them or learning how to play pinball machines. And yeah. Hanging out in the cool. living room, talking yeah. about, like, one father today was working with his kids about Atari. Yeah. And they were playing, like, I think Atari Asteroids uh-huh. and then Space Invaders. And that was super cool to just see him explain, well, this is how the TVs used to look. And this is how the consoles, like that Switch you have, this is kind of like what a kid my age, when I was your age, you know yeah. what I mean, would have had. Yeah, so, I mean, I think we've had everybody from three years old to 53 and everything in between here. Right. And everybody has fun. Like, everybody leaves here saying, I'll be back. Like, this is really cool, and I'll, I'll come back. So Today, we got, and this is, a, I think, a good, today's been a great day. Yeah. We've been getting great compliments. Like, the place is filling up. Like, it just feels good. Yeah. It's a good day for a week, Arcade. And someone on top of that came in with a tub of VHS. I was oh, there. Yeah. You were there. Yeah. Like 150 VHS tapes on yeah. top. He showed up. He he had emailed me ahead of time and asked um, if we buy out stuff. And I said, no, not really. I mean, if you want to donate stuff to us, totally fine. But we don't really, we're not in the buy, sell, trade, whatever. We just, it's a collection that we use in the space. And he was like, oh, okay, well, I'll probably still bring them. And so then today he shows up and he's like, I need help lifting them out of the car. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. So awesome. me and uh, Shane, one of our employees, go out there, and it is one of those massive Rubbermaid tubs full to the brim with VHS, VHS tapes, tapes and a working VCR. And a beautiful JVC, <coughs> hi-fi, stereo VCR, right. kind of late 90s, mid-90s. Yeah. yeah, it was an absolute beautiful haul. Yeah, it's been super cool to see just people in the community come out and to awesome. learn about that. I think you mentioned that the people you were talking to are associated with a homeschool group that has booked two separate sessions for 30 kids to come out here and learn a little bit about the history of arcade games and all of that, and then obviously get to play in the arcade. So it's a little field trip for them to come out here and be able to do something safely, and we're doing that during the week. So even not while we're actually open, we'll be doing that on weekdays. Um, So that was a cool opportunity. Like already getting into some educational programming, I'm all about it, right? It's been been really cool. Yeah. And the the space is just kind of ready to be occupied. Yeah. Like we had sitting between Tim and I using it as an office or just have collecting these games for now two years, two and a half. To see other people use them and to like have them where they should be in a position where they're accessible is everything. Yeah. I think the hardest part is resisting the urge to change things. Like resisting the urge to say, well, what's next? Because obviously yeah. we're always like we've worked on this concept for so long. Now that it's successful, we're immediately like, well, should we open <laughs> up more days? Should we do discounts on the weekends? Yeah. And like marketing is a big part of it, too. It's like and we're still trying to learn what it means to market yeah. a physical location that serves the public. It's different. It's, it's very it's different very in that different regard. There, I mean, there's obviously overlap in terms of the word of mouth aspect, which has always been really big with yeah. Reclaim Posting. Facebook has been gigantic. Yeah, whereas yeah. like Reclaim Posting doesn't even have a Facebook account. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. you know, it's like there are things that are the same and things that are very different in terms of how you market it. But I think right now what we're trying to find comfort in is just this is working and this is working well. So let's continue that and build off of it and see what the community wants, what they're asking for and kind of yeah. build it over time rather than great, now let's change it up and let's do this this week and let's do all of that because we have tons of ideas. I mean, we've talked about everything from Saturday morning cartoons with the half-off special with you and your family and we've talked about opening up Thursday nights, whether we do tournaments for Mortal Kombat 2 or pinball tournaments or something like that and uh, all kinds of various ideas and things. And I think that stuff will come. Um, A big wrench in a lot of that stuff is COVID, right? There's a lot of restrictions, um, rightfully so, around how many people you can have in the space and how do you control the flow of traffic in there. And I think we've done a really good job right now of doing, of controlling that and knowing how many people are in the space, leaving room for cleaning and for social distancing and stuff. But it's really hard when you start thinking through things like, well, we'll just open it up on a Thursday night yeah, for yeah. people to come. And true. you want to do it. But at the same time, you're like, well, we don't want just anybody to show up. We don't want to be that kind of business that's just like, yeah, party, you know, like yeah. out till midnight, those kind of things. So it's it's difficult. In fact, we've even doubled down on like Wi-Fi. So, so much are we concerned about this. But rather than us having other things out there, we created a TV antenna <laughs> that from this studio can send over Raspberry Pi of various kind of media, right? That's right. And it, it's picked up on two different 
TV, so you can social distance the TVs and everything gotcha. in between and send the <laughs> I was wondering out. where you were going to come back to <laughs> the COVID regulations and over-the-air broadcasting. But it's been fun in that, yeah. like, it is very controlled small space, but, like, we've been able to, even on this trip, actually, like, do some cool stuff. Yeah. Like, we built some storage because we have, you know, extra boards and stuff that we got to start maintaining. We have, like, space now we got to make for these pieces and the games and the maintenance. But then also, like... We have a little time to experiment with you getting games online, right. us playing with TV, dialing in some of the living room and VHS store. It's been, it's been so cool to see it because it's super functional. The space right. with 20 people in it feels like it's empty. Yeah. Right. We have, you know, no one's in there with them. You have a party you're by yourself, but also like you're separate as an employee. So mm-hmm. they can all do that, and everything runs. The games have stayed right. up. We haven't had major problems. Like, yeah, it's very self-service very, in that regard. Like, it's like it's it's not only beautiful, but it's also highly functional. Right. And I just love that about it. Like yeah. it's a, it's a really one too. It's very in some ways the arcade itself is very minimal. It's just the games. Yeah, and I and I think um, I think if there's a lesson that we've we've learned in taking from reclaim hosting, and we took it here was that, like, you know, we had employees from day one. We trained them up to make sure that, yeah. like, I mean, we're sitting here recording an episode while there is a full house behind us yeah. playing the games. Not literally, like, the green screen. That's obviously <laughs> just an image. Uh, but There's a wall. There is a green screen wall behind us, and behind that is the arcade. And there are tons of people, not tons, but there's a full house in terms of the limits that we've put on it over there. And we've been able to hang out over here and be yeah. separate from that. We really spent these two weeks making sure they were trained up and comfortable on answering questions, answering the phone, yeah. problems that come up, even basic arcade troubleshooting. I taught them, you know, how to like turn games on and off and open up the open glass. Open up off. a pinball machine, yeah. which was crazy. Yeah. So like they they have the basics down, and obviously that's a bit self serving. This is open on the weekends. I, Tim don't want to be here on no. the weekends, right? So the I even have great. them looking for VHS mold <laughs> and on beta, and then also using the head cleaner. Yeah. I showed, and then we also have to show them how to use the Selectivision, the laser disc, the Betamax, the vinyl. Like they need to be like it's kind of a job. Like you need to be familiar with all the formats. People are going to ask you questions. So reclaim arcade. We're back, and I think they could probably not hear us the whole time. Battery died on the camera, but we're back. Oh, um, so they couldn't hear that either. I don't. Did you see when it cut out? <laughs> this is a really professional <laughs> recording. Did we tell you how operationalized and good? Look, I'm are? an arcade operator. I'm not a fucking you know studio man. <laughs> I moved on. Exactly. We moved on from the TV studio in September. Yeah, yeah. it has moved that fast though. It does seem like a lifetime yeah. ago. But yeah. But like you were saying, I mean, the space is super functional. People are having fun. And I think the lesson that we learned from the space was, you know, make sure that there's enough help so that we can, yeah. you know, be over here and not necessarily have to mind the arcade and everything else. Especially it's open on the weekends. I'm not yeah. <laughs> three days Tim, a week. Tim is doesn't nice, want to come actually. on the weekend. Yeah. But like that's the other thing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, practically Tim doesn't want to be on the weekends, but Three days means that it's not a five or six day a week job or seven. And then it also means that you have time during the week to play with games, to yeah. do some maintenance. And it's kind of something we're just doing yeah. several days a week. But no it's one's It's a nice really reset. You kind of get to say, like, what worked, what didn't. And yeah. frankly, there wasn't a lot that didn't work. But I mean, no. uh, what was one of the big lessons that we actually readjusted uh, that very first weekend was we needed a coat rack. Oh, right. I mean, it was a tiny yeah. thing, but it was like, oh, people need somewhere to put coats because it's cold outside yeah. and they don't want to drape them over, you know, a table or something like that. So we put a coat rack in the living room <laughs> for people to set their but coats down. There weren't many surprises like that. Not huge ones. I think the game maintenance will be a thing, right? Like, so. We already know yeah. that. That's yeah. something That's we already thing. did this. Like, what happened? Wizard of War, the sound chip. Right. Had issues. We're testing the Tutankhamun, but we think it was a power yeah. module. Like, you kind of modulated the power, and that seems to have fixed Tutankham. We got new board for Phoenix, but the issue with Phoenix still remains. Yeah. So we think it might be a power issue. But knowing, like, to your point about community, knowing people that fix those things, like, yeah. I can do some basic troubleshooting, and then being able to send it off to someone that does the repairs and sends it back, I mean, that's a good system. We have spare parts so that we can yeah. swap boards out. And all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, 
I feel like we're in a really good place to even manage that, which isn't, you know, nothing considering the number of games that we have. A so, ton, yeah. yeah. We have 50, I think 54 old school video games on the floor and eight pinball. Wow. 62. And at least like two more on the way, I believe. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. It, it, Scramble, Super, yeah. no, Super Cobra. Super Cobra. Scamber. Yeah. Scramble. And then we're going to get Wizard of War back on. Pleads. Pleads. So right. actually three. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah. yeah. So 57 in total. That we have and we almost we almost had Space Invaders, we thought, back yeah. up and running. It'll come eventually. That was we'll so, out. but that was a yeah. moment where we were waiting for Monitor yeah. Boy to maybe <laughs> fix it in the moment. If every game that would be, you know, we'll get there eventually. And that's crazy because we're already almost at capacity. And it's been, yeah. we've had to figure out like to your, you know, like, breaker issues with electric <laughs> electricity true. and like how many things go on an outlet the occupancy inspector was like you're not allowed to use extension cords so that's right we're like okay so is... yeah so let's make sure that all that's good and we found out the way things were wired in the building like half the building is on a single breaker so there have been some challenges there to figure out how to make it all work and you know we can obviously make some of those repairs over time but we need not to make sure that... we haven't had problems in that regard no we haven't no, but right. but you know it was a scramble you know a week leading up to it to make sure that all that stuff was good to go yeah, and now it's true. been running really well and it's, it's exciting beautiful. it's been really rewarding to see people you know having fun in the arcade and talking it up I love compliments but I mean yeah. people you know just having fun and enjoying the space you know it, it's it's out of our head and it's into the community exactly that's, that's the thing it's like out there yeah. now like whether it's good or not like we'll find out. Like, whatever, but, like, despite it, it feels it. Like, it feels like here's a space that's trying something, that's pulling together some cool elements from our past, and it sits strangely between, like, the art of those cabinets in the 80s and those video games and the history, but also, like, a feel of a place yeah. and a time. And I like that. It kind of, like, you know, it's concept and practical good fun. Yeah, well, there were, cool. there, were, there were certainly some months there where I wasn't sure we were going to actually get to this point. Maybe and not. in my hopes and dreams, I don't think I expected that it would come in January. So I think, yeah. you know, that we were ahead of schedule in that regard and realizing what we could do and that we could still, even in the midst of a pandemic, open safely and do it in the right way and have it still be successful. So Yeah, it seemed unreal when yeah. we committed to saying we're going to get open in January. Yeah. But I'm glad we did it. Yeah, it happened and people are showing up and... Everybody has commented not just on how fun it is, but also that the customer service and how safe things are yeah. and everything. And so that's a real testament, I think, to the work that we've done. Well, that's the thing, I think, too, that we brought over from Reclaim Hosting was, you know, being a tech <coughs> and being a bit like we knew good support goes a long way and people feeling happy and taken care of. And I think that's yeah. always been a strength you've had. And like the way even like when we had the snow on the first weekend, yeah. everybody got discount codes. Everybody was invited to come back. Everybody was like, hey, we know this is like a yeah. time. Like, and then that goes, pays forward. Yeah, it does for sure. It, it costs good. you almost nothing, you know. Yeah. To be actually good is actually <laughs> probably a good idea. Like yeah. to have people who are coming to you as interest in mind and to say, look, thank you for what you are doing, supporting us. And. Showing it in kind, it's so cool. So that feels good too, to be dealing with a public again in a different way. Yeah. Like a very physical, present public. So that's well, cool. I have no doubt that the story is not over. And I mean, like I said, we've got plenty of ideas and it's really just now navigating what's working and what we might want to tweak and what things we want to move into next and when's the right time to do them. Of course, that's a whole nother element. I didn't... Uh, I didn't expect to have to buy hand sanitizer stations, you know, back a, a year and a half ago when we were dreaming about Although this. Although they're nice. They are. Yeah, they're they're super nice, touchless ones. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting, you know, in the next couple months, in the next year or so to see where everybody moves and then how we respond to that. Because like I said, the, yeah. the current situation has required a certain way that we operate, very limited capacity sessions that are booked in advance, all that kind of stuff. But as time goes on, it'll be really interesting to just get a sense of like, what do we want to change? What yeah. don't we want to change? And where do we go from here? So. I just want to buy more games. So I think <laughs> yeah. as soon as I get the green light, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Well, if you if you know of another building, that would be great. Because <laughs> we're pretty much at capacity. We're at, that's true, though. Like, yeah. I look around and like, we filled it. Yeah. 
And I don't yeah, have any more breakers it. for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's full. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, looking around here like, where, where, where? Okay, where's that, that wrecking ball? <laughs> well, we've got, we've got <laughs> options to expand if we need to. We'll see how things go. But it's been fun. I mean, it's super cool to be able to dream this up and to get to a point where it's reality. And now where we go from here is all the next step of the next story. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, I think that's... That's a wrap for this episode. But Big fan. Stay tuned for the future. <laughs> Reclaim our cape for life. For life.